Hey, what's up guys? I'm assuming you're here for my TikTok, but just in case, I'll explain it. I went to New Orleans, I got to tour the Bio Innovation Center, and I met this company named Axosim that's building a really cool technology, and it's a human nerve on a chip, and you can basically accelerate drug testing. It was really awesome meeting them, and I'm excited to show you guys the tour of their lab and everything, so let's get into it. Now is the time to take risk. Bio Innovation Center. It's a manning the fort. <laughs> Hey, my name's Chris Khalil. We're here in beautiful New Orleans. I'm the executive director of the New Orleans Bio Innovation Center. We work with startups uh, working on advanced technology, bioscience, life science. We have medical device companies. We have some diagnostics. We help them by providing commercialization services, beautiful facilities, wet lab and office space, as well as startup funding. Exactly. How do it? So this is Lowry, and you're the co-founder of Axosim. Awesome. Founder and CEO of Axosim. But how long have you been working on this? So in one form or another, I've been working on this for 12 years now. I'm talking about <laughs> it was a third of my life that I've been working. On <laughs> <laughs> that's a that's some serious dedication. Yeah, I've been immersed in this to say the least. That's awesome. So you've been in one of these laboratories over yeah, here. We started out in one of the labs, and we've now actually expanded to three of the labs. Oh wow! It's been growing very quickly. We've doubled uh, the size of the team in the last year. Um, how big is your team now? So we're up to 26 team members now. Wow, that's a large team. Do you want to show us the labs now? I would love to. Let's awesome. Let's go. So, so, yeah, we got the nerve on a chip in the mini brain right here. So you can see it as soon as you walk in. So what are these photos from? These photos are basically, you know, through a microscope where we can dye the different types of cells with fluorescent markers. Then we can come in and we can image it so you can see what types of cells are there, you know, what are those cells doing, how are they connecting to each other. Mm -hmm. It's sort of the first way that we can tell how healthy the cells are. Basically. And is this photo from one of the first times that you saw this uh, nerve being imaged? This was one of the first ones where we realized we were able to build in multiple cell types. So that must have been like a really huge moment when you that saw was, that. That was a very big moment. From the time that we put this picture up to the time that we actually published this data, you know, it was probably a little bit over a year, but showing this image to, you know, our, our customers, they got extremely excited because, yeah. I mean, nobody else is doing that. That was the first nerve on a chip that, you know, we created and now we've commercialized. Awesome. Let's All go right, to the lab. Let's go see the rest of it. And this was the first lab that we started in. This is basically the lab where we grow the nerves on a chip as well as the mini brains. So they grow inside these environmental chambers. And you can see inside here, we actually have some of the nerve on a chip specimens growing. And so they spend about four weeks in this environment before they're ready to be tested. How small do they start, like when they start growing? They start as a tiny ball of cells, probably about the size of the eye of a fly. Okay, somewhere wow. around that size. And then when they grow, you know, they grow to about half the size of, of your thumbnail. And I can show you an example. It's ability to grow out into that nerve where, you know, the, the nerves themselves stretch in a really long. That's what makes us very unique. And that's mm -hmm. what lets us do testing on it. It's actually the same information that a neurologist would get. Ultimately, the way that the nervous system works is there's an electrical component to it, right? So an electrical signal has to travel just like it would from your spinal cord to the tip of your finger. You touch something hot, that electrical signal goes all the way up to your spinal cord and then your brain. It travels at a certain speed and at a certain strength, then it's healthy. But if it starts to deteriorate because of uh, maybe a drug that has a side effect or because of a disease that we can put into the system, then it slows down. It may not even get from the tip of your finger to your spinal cord anymore. So what's, what's this? So this is sort of a manual way that we use to test these drugs. So I mentioned that electrical signal. We can actually come in and using this machine and these electrodes, basically sensors, we can stick these sensors into the nerve on a chip and we'll have them come in from multiple directions. So you can see mm -hmm. one of them right here. And by inserting these into the nerve on a chip, we can basically measure that signal. So same thing, we have two sensors. How long does it take to get from point A to point B? And how strong is that signal? And then this is actually a representative size of them. So those are two of the nerves that we would grow sort of in parallel. And we can put that basically in here and we come in you know, with those electrodes and we stick that right in the system. And that's how we can do the measurement. I showed you this you know, big machine earlier where I told you we manually insert those electrodes. This is actually gonna be part of Nerve on a Chip 2.0. We'll basically already have those sensors you know, embedded in this actual chip. We can build the nerves on top of that, and then we'll pop that in a machine, read it automatically, so we don't have to have a scientist or a technician actually manually you know, wow. doing that testing. So you've taken this tech, and you've been able to compress this machine from this size, and now it will be just like this. Just like that. And exactly. that is the test. That's where we really get to scale this thing up. Wow, that's, that's, that's huge. Test hundreds and thousands of drugs. <laughs> That's huge. That's a really good yeah. This is where things start to get really interesting and really fun. And then this is, you know, like I said, this is where we test hundreds of drugs at a time and we really can start working with, you know, every big pharmaceutical company there is. Anytime they have a drug, you know, we can do it so fast compared to animals, you know, they're gonna test it here first before they decide which drugs they really wanna spend more money on. It would look something like this, ultimately. 
So okay. if you can have you know that same technology, but you can then run 24 of them at a time, then you can theoretically run 24 drugs at the same so time. So this is basically like 24 of these constantly running. Yes. Wow. That's wow. where you get like the 10x improvements and everything like Absolutely. that. Absolutely. This will be about 10x. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, what I just showed you gets us closer to 100x, you know, as we're doing this at scale. So that's really cool. And here's some photos of Nerve on a Chip 2.0 a little bit closer up. And this one actually has a nerve on it, but it's pretty translucent, so it's tough to see. You know, I mentioned the Nerve on a Chip is a platform. And mm -hmm. depending on what cells we put in there, changes basically what model and what drugs we can test. Yeah. So ALS, ALS is a, a model that we're developing currently. Basically, we can take cells from a patient who has ALS, grow that in our system, and we start to see images that basically look like what a patient with ALS would have. What that lets us do in the next step of that is basically adding drugs, you know, that hopefully reverse those changes. And then we, you know, theoretically can see that they return to a healthy state. A pharmaceutical company is testing, let's say they start with a thousand versions of a drug that they mm -hmm. think might work. You know, they slowly whittle that down until they have one version of a drug that they then take into patients, into clinical trial. Along that process, basically at the end, you're, you have to rely on animal testing because it's the most complex systems out there and the FDA requires it. And what our technology lets you do is mimic certain aspects of that with human cells to help those pharmaceutical companies kind of narrow that funnel and faster. And there's a couple different ways that we can test these basically to see, you know, how are they reacting to certain drugs. But we can basically pop them in here, very quickly take images of them, just like the one I showed you when we first walked in, look at the cells and we could say, yeah, you know, this cell is healthy, you know, this cell has gotten sicker, you know, this drug worked, this drug didn't. This machine, we can come in and we can basically slice the nerve up. And when we slice the nerve up, we can actually go in and we can look at very particular structures within the cells. So we can see, you know, did the drug actually hit that target within the cell? And then here we'll know kind of what it did to the cell. Different tests. These are different tests, different conditions. Whoa. There you go. These nice little filaments here are what we're actually looking for. So why are you looking for that? What our model is good at is myelination. This is what distinguishes us from 2D models. 2D cell culture models don't have myelination, whereas 3D culture models are our models do. Can you highlight the myelination or like yes. run over it? So this is gonna this is the nerve filament. So these are the axons and the neurons. And then this is gonna be myelin. Here, for example, that guy right there is zoomed in a little bit and zoom out. Okay. That nice process coming down this way is actually myelination. Right here. So that's a myelinated brain cell. <clears throat> that's brain a myelinated nerve. axon. One of our groups of, of scientists made this piece of art out of you know different examples of what it is we do. So you have the nerve on a chip, yeah, you have zoomed in part of the nerve on a chip, and you have multiple examples of the mini brains. You know, all of those are showing different types of cells that we have put into this. And this is basically a zoomed in version where we've sliced up a nerve, and this is one little thin section where we can zoom in and we can look at very specific targets, mechanisms that you know a drug and a disease may affect. You take this and you take a couple slices of it, then you flip that slice over and that's what you're looking at right there. Those red things are very specific cells. Uh, in this case, those are sensory neurons. And depending on how many of these cells might be there, you know, before and after a drug is added tells us a lot about you know, what it is that drug is actually doing to the nerve. This is actually uh, 10,000 neurons. That's what's so <laughs> exciting about it. So this is all of the neurons kind of collected together. And these are the actual fibers, the, the nerve fibers that are growing out of it. That was an image from your lab. Yeah, that was an image from this technology. What's your background? So my background is biomedical engineering. Okay. So I did my PhD at Tulane University in biomedical engineering, but I focused on what's called tissue engineering, basically you know, the ability to actually build this three-dimensional environment that the nerve on a chip grows in. Okay. And you know, I always focused on neuroscience. It's yeah, really what I'm I'm passionate about. It's been great seeing you know my PhD research be translated into something commercial that pharmaceutical companies are now using. And you know, we can now say we we actually helped test this drug that is now literally going into patients mm -hmm. and ultimately you know has a better chance of succeeding. Are you looking to hire more people or who are you trying to hire right now? So right now we're actually hiring more on the kind of sales and marketing side. Okay. So, so far we've been building out our technical team, but now you know we really have you know, the core people that we need, and as I've been showing you, our focus is on technology scale up. So mm -hmm. we can do more, you know, with the people that we have, right? And we expect to be growing a lot in the next year, but right now we're focusing on building out a sales organization, getting our marketing right, business development. Because we can handle more testing, you know, we obviously need more customers coming in, and, and we can handle that and keep, Definitely. keep going through more contracts for existing customers. Mm -hmm. So if somebody's in New Orleans, they should apply. Well, in New Orleans, <laughs> and they they're interested apply. in sales. Even if they're not in New Orleans, yeah. they want to come to okay. New Orleans. Okay, if they want to come to New Orleans, they That's should apply. Absolutely. Go to Definitely. the website, accessfem.com. We have a careers page, and it'll take you uh, you know, straight to uh, jobs that we have posted. Awesome. Yeah, and I'll, I'll link that in the description. Thank you, Angela. Yes, no <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> appreciate it. Absolutely. Cool.
Do you want to go to a parade or anything? Yeah. Let's go to a parade. Awesome. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. It was really great meeting Lowry and getting a tour of the Axosim Labs. The technology they're building is really cool, especially compressing that entire machine into the size of a chip and then like stringing them together. So like and subscribe, be sure to comment and let me know if you actually have another company that you want me to go meet. If you're building something that's really cool, definitely reach out to me. I am really fascinated by people building the future, building startups and you know, Axosim is a really great example of that. So I'm excited to find more people like that. Cool. Uh, see you in the next one. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah, ready for his ready first, for Mardi Gras. First Mardi Gras, he caught all the beads. And, and, yeah, your first Mardi Gras, you get all the beads because you think you need every bead you can possibly find, and yeah. you realize that you have nothing to do with them so <laughs> except hang once, them up in your lap. Hang them up in your lap. You do that once, and then you basically understand. And then I, I like the pickle Rick too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That, that is also huge. That was, that was part of one of our uh, company white elephant parties. Oh, okay. He got that, and it's lived here ever since. <laughs>